All right, I'm guessing I am audible. Yeah. Right, welcome everyone. So we all know some wannabe trailblazer who thinks that putting everything onto the blockchain will solve all of the world's problems. We've probably met quite a few people at this event these past few days. But does such a strategy always work? My contention here is no, it actually doesn't. And I'll be using the example of knowledge sharing processes. Let's cut through the buzzwords first. Because, you know, when it comes to the blockchain, you can slap a token or smart contract on everything and call it decentralized. I, I use the definition of an instance when the production, curation, and management of knowledge is achieved using crypto economic incentive mechanisms without relying on a central coordinator. Or in words that would make more sense to an ETC crowd, I mean staking and slashing mechanisms, which I would argue is the only reliable way to ensure coordination at least above the base protocol level. So in case there are any Bitcoin maxis, um, you know, I feel sorry for you, but I'm not necessarily arguing against you right now. Um, so what exactly do I mean by knowledge in this instance? Because here I would distinguish knowledge from information or data. Data is what I would call raw, unprocessed facts or details without context, you know. Think of just numbers, 120, 110, 100. Information is when you add context to that data or structure in a way to make it meaningful or useful, such as associating those numbers with stock names to denote stock prices. Knowledge, on the other hand, is when you apply that information. For instance, you're drawing conclusions on what to do with your stock portfolio once you get those weekly reports on your stock prices. So, a knowledge sharing process would be slightly different from a data sharing or an information sharing process. Let me just draw this caveat. There is uh, definitely overlap among these examples and they're not mutually exclusive, but it works as a heuristic. I would refer to a public use data set as a data sharing process, a curated list or even a library as an information sharing process, and a scientific publishing journals encyclopedias or communities of practice as knowledge sharing processes. And because of time constraints, I will be focusing my discussion today on encyclopedias. And by encyclopedia, I mean the only encyclopedia we've ever used since 2004. Now, let's have a show of hands. How many of you have used Wikipedia for serious academic research even though you knew you were not supposed to? How many of you haven't? I, I guess you guys are liars, but whatever, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? There, there's three reasons for this, um, because uh, for Wikipedia's success in this regard, it's because of its, one, its strong community spirit, two, its lack of entry barriers, and three, its emphasis on the collective ownership of content. However, despite all its successes, being a top 10 website, being that it's primarily volunteer run and funded from donations, Wikipedia has had its fair share of detractors over the years, and this criticism comes from three largely interrelated reasons. Firstly, there's a really complex hierarchy of jannies in Wikipedia. You know, there's users who are called editors, there's uh, users that are called admins, oversights, arbitrators. S another problem is it's ruled by 1% that, you know, infects most um, online communities where 1% of the editors in Wikipedia contribute 80% of the content. And thirdly, Wikipedia is accused of harboring editorial biases. It's not too simple, like Japanese Wikipedia is accused of being way too right-wing. English Wikipedia is accused of being way too left-wing. So in response to these, there were some geniuses who decided that we are gonna bring decentralization to Wikipedia and solve all of these problems and decentralize not only its governance, but also its core um, a core process of dispersing knowledge to the masses. Enter Everypedia. Now, they sought to uh, bring staking and slashing to the editorial process of Wikipedia itself. The way this works is you take IQ tokens, you lock them up for 21 days, you get something known as brain power points. Now, you as an IQ editor, you make a new page and then it's voted on by other people who have staked that token. Now, there's a challenge period, and then if it's challenge, um, the other stakers vote on whether to accept your edit or not. 
if you are successful, you get curation rewards. The uh, stakers who voted to accept your article also get curation rewards. These come from token inflation proposed platform fees. Now, if your edit is rejected, or if you were a, a voter in the staking pool who was in the minority, you get slashed. What I found interesting about their slashing model is the slash tokens are not burned or redistributed. It's just that the lockup period is extended by how um, contentious the vote was. For instance, if it was for a 49-51 split, your slash would be you know, not too long. If it was a 90-10 split, then your, your, your slash would be, I don't know, in the course of weeks or months. It sounds pretty straightforward, and on the service level, it looks like a genius idea, a way of replacing Wikipedia. The question is, do you think it actually worked? It did not. Now, what happened with Everypedia? The majority of submissions ended up being copy-paste jobs of Wikipedia. Ultimately, Everypedia deployed a bot that would monitor Wikipedia for changes and scrape it and update it accordingly. Any new breaking news topics were full of fake news, misinformation. Original articles were mainly self-promotional materials and shitcoin spam. It's uh, so-called less sensorial policy just resulted in a bunch of non-notable articles and defamatory content. Ultimately, the progress of Everypedia ground to a halt. Most IQ token holders were more interested in speculating with the token rather than actually using it. And now Everypedia is being rebranded as IQ Wiki. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing. Last time I checked them, they've now decided to jump on the AI hype cycle. Honestly, I harbor no ill will towards them. I wish them all the best. But what exactly can we learn here? What went wrong with Everypedia? It was the lack of community spirit that made Wikipedia so successful. Everypedia chose the route of financialization of all its community interactions. The well-being of the individual contributor was given explicit center stage through the celebration of self-interest. And as you can see by the IQ token price, I, you know, that didn't really work out well. Although I'm not much of a price discussion person, especially for reasons I'd rather not go into. Now, I'm not gonna be, pretend to be an evolutionary anthropologist here, but based on the first page of Google, which I searched for five minutes, there seems to be research backing up what I'm saying here, right? Uh, a desire to volunteer and a strong community spirit, they are related, linked in a virtuous circle with each reinforcing the other. And secondly, one of the primary roles of money is to facilitate temporary cooperation between strangers who will never meet again. But if that relationship is, is by definition temporary, you can't really emphasize that community ownership and that community identity if it's all based on money. And thirdly, the, one of the theories is that money makes cooperation possible when you cannot rely on reputation and kinship alone. So how do Wikipedia and Everypedia square off with each other? Well, Wikipedia effectively depersonalized the editing process by emphasizing community ownership of editorial output. You open a Wikipedia page, there are no authors, there are no attributions. You can maybe go into the talk page in the background and you'll see arguments, but they're ne never publicly attributed to the face of you. This policy, together with its low transaction costs to participation, it fostered collaboration. Editors were encouraged to contribute even if they thought they were not experts or could not put in much effort. Okay, maybe I'll change this here. I'm not entirely sure this is true or not, but I'll make that edit anyway. Maybe someone later is gonna change it. Everypedia went the other way. They explicitly associated edits with contributors and directly financialized it. This introduced an element of risk and transaction cost to participation. And ultimately, risk aversion deterred potential contributors from participating in that process because, and some of the psychology literature backs it up, the average person tends to be more risk averse than perfectly rational. Now, risk aversion is something that you specifically don't want when it comes to sharing knowledge as opposed to sharing information or data because it, it forgets about the importance of dissent. Staking and slashing cryptoeconomic mechanisms, they're perfect at emphasizing coordination, not necessarily cooperation, and those two are slightly different things. Because when you have enforced coordination, there's no room for good faith disagreement from the majority. Uniformity, enforced uniformity is useful when you want strict compliance with norms or values, such as in accounting practices or building construction co codes. 
but where you want to safeguard diverse perspectives and open debates, you might just end up stifling intellectual diversity and uh, the expression of alternative viewpoints. When you directly penalize dissent, you promote conformity, groupthink, and you kill heterogeneity. And, you know, let's just look at it historically. What is one of the reasons that we have made such strides in science since the 18th century or so? One of the reasons is because we stopped burning scientists at the stake for saying things we don't like, right? So ultimately, having direct, uh, uh, direct penalties, whether financial or otherwise, it does deter people from speaking their mind. So what did this culminate into, right? Quantified financial gains were the only tangible benefit for Everypedia editors. And then on top of that, there was a risk of penalty for not appeasing the majority. Ultimately, nobody wanted to rock the boat. A natural shelling point ended up being formed because, you know, with crypto economic incentives and all, we we're all about shelling points. What was the shelling point for Everypedia? It was Wikipedia. Now, if you're trying to kill something as you advertise yourself, but that ends up being your, the sole reference for your existence, you're just a failed project all around. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, part of the reason is nothing gives me more morbid delight than walking into a crypto conference, looking crypto bros in their eyes and telling them that some of the things they've done is downright stupid. But beyond that, there's another message I want to emphasize here. Sensible system design entails knowing the fundamental culture and interactions a community, organization, or process requires. If you're sitting here and you're thinking about all your fancy game theory variables, all your cool smart contracts, first of all, sit back and think about what is that user on the other side behind that keyboard actually doing it? And most importantly, why is he doing what he's doing? Because I'm assuming all these systems and mechanisms you're building are for humans and they're not for rational, self-interested, autonomous agents or however you like to model them in the white papers. Ultimately, you have to cater to the human element at play which, uh, which requires you to think about people as people, not as autonomous agents. The pursuit of quantified tokenized incentives to coordinate human behavior works sometimes in other cases, it compromises fluid and natural interactions. We have to understand that enforced coordination is not always ideal. There are situations where you want to facilitate dissent or allow people to be wrong because you never know. Maybe that person being wrong might end up being right later. And it's, it's just not, you know, it's just it's not efficient if you say that ultimately he might be able to convince someone we don't know how, but he will. Let's keep these crypto economic designs. Because there's a bunch of buzzwords the blockchain hype emphasizes, stuff such as transparency, immutability, trustlessness. But people don't necessarily value these concepts in their day-to-day -day lives. Just look at all the bullshit that's going on with the Arkham's docs to earn sort of model that they've just released, right? People are thinking, hey, why are you doing this? They're saying, oh, but it's all about the blockchain space. No, it's not. It's about humans and what humans want. We, uh, and, you know, we are not autonomous agents. So I guess my message here for the crypto crowd is stop being a bunch of goddamn autists. Go out, touch grass, talk to people. Thank you very much. Great, I think I'm perfectly right here. <laughs> Wonderful.